I'm starting a new dive. This dive is at my high rocks location and you can see I've got my float already out putting on my fins. The water's cold, uh, 57 degrees. And in this type of cold water I need my gloves. Uh, this kind of handicaps the video that I'm taking because it means that I have to keep it uh, up on my head. I've got a helmet cam mounted and so all of this video will be from the helmet cam. It's always a pleasure to finally get the weight off my back and sit down in the water and get relaxed and get ready to dive. This first dive is on Sunday, June 11th, 2017. And this is significant because the water is still very high. You can see visibility is not all that great. Um, normally when I start out here, normally when I start out here there's a um, island that shows, but because of the high water there's no island and you, you will see the uh, push of the current behind me. Right now I'm in a cross current, so there's two currents here, and when that happens and there's high velocities for the current, the bubbles travel a lot of times horizontally. I've just dove down to the bottom, and here I'm down to 25 feet underwater. checking the depth there with my dive computer. Now because of the depth, I've got to let out some more line to my float. Um, I've got to give it some slack in the water and because I'm at almost 25 almost 25 feet down. You can see that. Now this got on my back a little bit here and my bubbles, which normally from the double hose regulator are coming up behind me are actually coming up to the, by the camera and that's what made all that noise. A couple years ago I made this dive about this time, maybe a little bit earlier, and I saw some lampreys spawning in this area. And they were doing some very interesting things. They were on an incline. Uh, they were moving rocks around. Here I'm 23 feet underwater. They were doing that with their mouths, and then they would uh, get together and they'd actually go through their spawning. Now today I'm looking, and the first thing I see is a couple of dead lampreys. Then I come across one that's under a rock, and he's still alive. He's attached to the rock there. I'm just going to leave him in peace. He doesn't have much longer to live. Or she. I'm not sure of the sex of these. You can see the mouth. That's uh, a sucker mouth. It's got uh, teeth inside, and when they're in salt water, they attach to fish and feed off the fish. So they're a parasitic animal. This animal has been in the rivers for millions of years. And now I'm in a higher current. Before I was not in such a high current. There you can see one lamprey, but I can't stop. 
current is pushing me along rather, rather fast here. There's another one. You see him there, and I'm trying to stop, but I'm having a difficult time of it. Now, one of the reasons I dive solo is that there's very few people that can dive with me in these conditions. Okay, I was able to stop for him, but uh, he decided he was going to go some other place. Now we're going to a little bit further on this dive. And I see something I want to investigate. This is more like rock climbing than swimming because you're going hand over hand on, on hand holes in the current to get where you want to go. Luckily, I've got some big rocks that aren't going anywhere that I can use for leverage. And I see this lamprey under the log right there. And I want to get an, an idea of what's going on here. Coming up a little bit higher, I see another one. To stay in one place, you can tell by my breathing that I'm doing some work. And these guys are in what I'd like to call stream bed effect. They're kind of out of the current because they're behind rocks and they're right on the bottom and there's resistance to the bottom and turbulence so that they aren't swept away like I am. I'm up in the current trying to hold on. Sometimes successfully, sometimes not. <laughs> but I want to watch this one and see what's happening here. Maybe I'll get lucky and see some spawning activity. Now he's moving rocks, which indicates to me that he's, he or she is nest building. As I said, this is on my helmet, so I'm having to look at him to the side because of the current, so that's why he seems like he's on his side, he's not. Now he's going under me. I've moved the camera on the so that it's pointing under me and you can see him and he looks like he's on a ceiling but he's actually on the bottom underneath me. back to the area that he was in when I first came, and there's two of them now. So he and she are there. I don't know which is which. And you can see they're trying to move some of the bottom sand and gravel uh, with their bodies. the two rocks. There's one rock shaped like a triangle and another one that's a little grayer just above it and there's a opening between the two and they're very interested in that area. Some spawning has already occurred, and they're trying to cover up some eggs there.
There's moving a rock. It looks like they're trying to move gravel into that area. Right there, it looked like the male was trying to do some spawning, and the female said no. That's just my impression that it looked like that. Now again, that's below me. Whoops, there's a golf ball that I had collected earlier. It came out of my pocket and almost hit it on the head. Note that they are quite obsessed, you might say, with the spawning activity. They're pretty much ignoring me. That's probably because this is the last real act that they'll do. In a week, these two will be dead. some more rocks being moved. And it looks like they're they're going out of way from that spawning area. This one, probably the female, is staying right there. There's the male, I believe, the other one. Again, they're trying to move rocks. Now I felt something weird between my legs, and there's two more between my legs here. down and there they are again both of them right back in the same spot now the interesting thing about this is that you can't tell that this is a nest that this is where they have spawned
uh, she grabs a hold of the rock again, and again with her, her body, she's moving rocks down into the area. Gravel, I should say. I need to emphasize that that is not the actual spawning activity. This is covering an area that I think they've already spawned into. They've already laid some eggs down and fertilized them. I keep checking the camera to make sure it's recording where I should, where it should be, so that I can see these animals when I get the film back. Video back. Again, she goes off, he goes off. And I try and follow and cannot. The current is too great, and I've, I've got to go downstream from there. I see some more. We'll try to stop, and you can see the results. That's that's a heavy current. There's another one. I try to stop, and by golly, they'll go. Stopped. But no lampreys. <laughs> so downstream I go again. I'm approaching my takeout point for this dive. Self untangled a little bit. And end the dive. Upon review of the video, it looks like a cloud of sperm was emitted by one of the lampreys. Okay, I'm starting a new dive, throwing out my dive flag, and getting ready to go in the water. As I'm getting ready, I'm remembering a dive that I made much earlier, on June 18, 2011, where I had seen lampreys before. I wrote in my dive log, I swam up the gravel bank from about 15 feet depth to about 10 foot depth, nearing the bottom portion of the, this eddy, but where there was still downstream current. And then I saw two more lampreys. Uh, they curled up around each other and became mating. I reached uh, up to my mask and brought my Seawiscope eye into position on my mask. This is a double lens device that allows very close focusing. Uh, and observation, and I watched these lampreys baiting several times in the grass and moving rocks around. So on this dive, I'm hoping that the baiting is still going on and I can see it. Now you can see I brought a different device. This is my hammerhead unit, which I use for what I call hammerhead dolphin swimming. And the swimming here helps me uh, against this large current. You can see that I'm moving fairly good in the current.
things get a little bit quieter because the bubble noise now is going up and not staying with me. Here I'm diving actually almost upside down in the current. You can see the rocks going over my head. Well, that's because I'm oriented head down and on my back almost with the current to get to the bottom. swimming against the current very hard and you can see I'm not making much progress so now I'm getting down to the bottom where the current is less and I can relax. Catching my breath basically what it is. Uh, some of the swimming is pretty pretty hard swimming. trying to stop because I see something I want to investigate. And again, I'm going to do some hand over hand, uh, this time with the rebar that I've got down at the bottom. And I come up, there's a, something I wanted to investigate. It looks like somebody's pants. I really don't want to know how they got there. I'm just going to leave them there. Okay, back into the current and back downstream. You can see the bubbles are still staying down, down with me because of the current. Now, I'm caught in some fishing line. See that? This is why I wear a knife. I've got to cut myself free of this fishing line because I don't want to get tangled and, and caught on the bottom. People look at these large diving dives, they don't realize that they're really quite a, a good safety piece of equipment because you can get yourself out of some stuff. Now my hammerhead unit has a piece of line on it that's gotten tangled around my float line, so I've got to dislodge that. There we go. And now I've got to turn myself around so the float line is free of my legs. using a line to the surface so that my position is marked on the surface. I'm diving solo. Uh, I'm not a young diver anymore, and so this is one of my precautions that I use. But with that precaution comes the problem of tangling in the lines. Here I'm trying to get my foot loose. You can see I'm using a different kind of fin here. That's a ferro fin that has a leg brace on it. It gives tremendous push to the water. Last week's, last week's lampreys are dead. They're sitting here in this debris pile. You can see probably a dozen or almost two dozen of lampreys in this pile that is all over the place. They're now becoming part of the river. Okay, I see, I see a lamprey, it's alive, and it's in a little depression. So I go up and see what's going on, and not much. It 
So after observing for a moment and seeing that it's not doing anything, basically, uh, I think the spawning for this particular animal is done, and I'm going to push off and go back downstream. This is what I look like. I thought I'd take the uh, camera off my head and, and give you a perspective. Now you can see that I'm swimming pretty hard, but I'm going backwards. That's, that's the current for you. I'm using a double hose hybrid scuba, or scuba regulator from Healthways that I built. It's a very easy breathing regulator, and then I see something that I really want to investigate. Look at these guys. They're really, they're moving rocks. They're, they're sitting here. Okay, I'm going to sit here and grab my hand hold on this. I've got this stick that I'm going to uh, hold on to, and I'm going to watch these guys. Because this camera is on a helmet, I can't see exactly where it's pointed to, so I'm hoping that I get the video that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for. This is the kind of activity I saw in 2011. Oh, there's another night gray on the left. He's a smaller one. Okay, here we go. We've got some activity moving gravel. There's more gravel moving. So something has happened right in that area. Either that or they're preparing. There's there's a big piece of rock that's uh, a big rock that's been moved. You can see also that they're pretty well ignoring me. move this big rock out of here or are we using that it looks like he's using that as a way of anchoring him to the bottom so he can move gravel rock being moved. That's a big rock being moved. See the tail of this guy? It looks like they're trying to spawn. A lot of body contact, a lot of 
sensory information being shared by these two. I think that was an attempt at mating, but the, the one decided no. Okay, here we go. What, what's going on? Okay, watch this. Look at the tails. There's eggs. There's eggs all over the place there. And you can see them in the gravel, and some of them disperse down into the water. So that tail being curled around the other, the female, that, that is the, the spawning activity that I saw in 2011. Now they're moving rocks over. You can still see some of the eggs on the bottom. because my, my helmet cam is sitting on that piece of wood and stick and it's scraping because of the current. I'm trying to hold it steady. Okay, now they're moving gravel over. See, there's gravel being placed over the top. Not too effectively, but a little bit. saw a trout go over there. There it is. It's looking for a free meal. There's another rock. A large flat one. <laughs> and then the, the other one says, no, I don't want that rock there. Okay, now we're moving gravel, trying to cover those eggs up. And there's the trout. out now that they've brought in, so that's interesting. And more gravel moving. They really want to get those rocks or those eggs covered up by gravel. What's interesting to me is this is all instinctive behavior. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, looked like we had an attempt by the male to get on top of the female again.
they separated a bit. There's another rock that I'm trying to move but not successfully. covering up the eggs. I don't see the eggs anymore. Now to give you some size perspective, I'm going to get myself into the picture here. Note how they're pretty well ignoring me and I've got a double hose regulator so the bubbles are way behind me. gravel moving here. Now they're moving up above the site. Got out of the way. Now what's hap what's happening here? What's happening here? Take a look at this. Here's another spawning activity. Oh my! More eggs. Very very interesting. Now I can see eggs again on a couple of the rocks and in the gravel. Here they are moving, moving more gravel down, down the stream, trying to get rocks over the top. Okay, I'm on reserve air now. I pulled my, my J valve, and so I've got to go. I have about two more minutes of air left. Now you can see how, how hard that current was. And I'm about ready to surface. I want to save some air in the tanks, and so I'm going to surface here and switch to my snorkel. And swim in. Wow, what a dive. I got to see the lampreys spawning. My, that was great. What's that? I was watching Lamprey's body. As I swim into my exit point, I've got a reception. And there are some kids here, they're going to start asking questions. Well, that helps me swim sometimes. 
Sometimes it's a big pain too. Sometimes it doesn't work too well. Oh, there we go. What's that? I can't hear you. Did you see a sea lion? No, no not sea lions. <laughs> Uh, I haven't seen any, but I could only see about six feet. So if they're out there, I didn't see them. Did you see any fish? Huh? Did you see any fish? Did I have a what? Did you see any fish? Oh yeah, lots of fish. Mostly little ones. A couple of larger ones. I saw one trout. There we go. It's interesting, I can't hear very well with the hood on. Oh, now I can hear some things. Water's pretty cold. Yeah, I've been in there for a little while. Okay, you got to be real careful and not jump in. Yeah. Head first. You got to get in slowly and then get used to it. Yeah. And uh, ah, then get out when you start getting cold. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Finally, I got some weird old fins on that. I've been trying to figure out how to, how they work, and when I figured out, finally, it, they work pretty well. But <laughs> huh, the designer screwed up a couple times. And I'm remembering, as I talk to the kids, the spawning activity that I've just witnessed. It is amazing to have seen this. And there's a difference between the activity of moving gravel, moving rocks, and the actual spawning. And here it is, the actual spawning. You can see that they get together and there's tail wrapped around tail and lots of motion as the eggs are produced. Died already. Yeah. And I finally found a a pair that were actively spawning. I saw them spawning and filmed them a little over a week ago. And I wasn't sure if they were still gonna be, well, they, they, they make a run up the river and they usually all start at about the same time. So they all die off about the same time. <laughs> when do they die? What's that? Well, they're they're about done spawning right now. I saw more dead ones than live ones today. So. I've never seen any dead eels anywhere. Oh, the... They're they're in there, and uh, lifeguards were reporting some of the birds taking them. They float to the top of the river. They go what? Do they float to the top of the river? No, no. They they sink and they're they're in the in the eddies and with a lot of the debris from the river. Uh, I counted uh, gosh, six or eight dead ones in, in one little debris field. Yeah. Did you ever see sea lions? I have not in the water. I, I have seen them and they're over at Falls. Well, yeah, we see them come up here every day. Do you? Yeah. Ah, well, now they have very good hearing. Yeah, so you're too loud. And I'm probably too loud for them. Yeah, and I can only see about six feet. I was curious the if they were curious. Uh, if they were, I didn't see them. Yeah. <laughs> because I've got some blind spots, even though I was using a mask that has three windows on it, I still got a lot of blind spots. Yeah, exactly. Well, I use that. Actually, I use that to uh, uh, for the dolphin kick. 
it stabilizes the dolphin kick. It's something I developed a long time ago and I've been playing around with for years and years and never done anything with. <laughs> yeah. They should. I don't think they have that. They only have no, they don't. for the back. Yeah. Doing it in the front. Yeah. It, it provides a little bit of stability, but also it provides some thrust. So pull it out here like this. And this is actually the uh, power blades off of a, a, a different device called an Aquion that used to have two blades and a piece that came up here and it would be right here and you go like this and move it around. Oh, I doubt it. I've got a patent on this, uh, this life vest. Nobody bought it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's it's got a parachute-style harness. It's more comfortable, and it'll stay in one spot. But everybody got away from straps and went to vests, <laughs> so it never sold. But it contributed a little bit to the knowledge of the of the diving. <sighs> so you guys are on a bike ride? Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. I, I bicycle a lot in the Everton area. And I'm on the, the Bicycle Advisory Committee, so I really like it when people are bicycling out. Yeah. Did you go over this bridge here? Yeah. Go all the way down. Ah. Back. This is all along the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 